Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome back to Shelf Stories, the channel that tells tales from games, books, and life. I am your host, Jason. Thank you so much for stopping by for this follow-up episode. Uh, anyone who knows my channel knows I like to, you know, pursue conversations, respond to people, uh, and continue. You know, that's how we learn. It's how we grow. So the last episode was called, uh, How Do I Know I Can Trust a Content Creator? Uh, my... Uh, continued evolution in my understanding of reviews and bias and you know as a reviewer uh, i think it's worth just continually checking in on that and making sure that my compass is pointed uh, in the right direction with this stuff so uh the last episode was focused on changing the, the dialogue a little bit and changing the perspective uh, so often when creators address this uh they focus on the perspective of the creator which is totally natural <laughs> Uh, we can only speak really from our own perspectives, but I guess I wanted to contribute uh, a little bit from the perspective of the consumer, because uh, it's the consumer that's expressing a lot of the skepticism that turns into cynicism. Cynicism bad, but skepticism is okay. Uh, so you know, and ask good questions. So uh, continuing that conversation, uh, I got a couple of comments that I felt really just got at it. You know, I, you know, in the last episode, you know, I tried to get at it. I did okay, but. I love some of these comments for how raw and direct uh, they were. This one comes from Facebook. There exists an adversarial relationship between consumers and content creators, right, wrong, or indifferent. There is the piece where content creators are viewed as what I would term as self-promotion. Everything the content creator does is about getting the likes, subscribes, thumbs, or equivalent on whatever platform. This alone makes content creators appear less than trustworthy, regardless of the opinions they are presenting. And I got this one uh, from Dan Thoreau, the Space Biff, uh, in response to one of his recent reviews of a, a crowdfunding project. Dan, you did blank dirty. Are you ashamed of yourself? The day he launches a game, you write a hit piece? When will everyone wake up and see you for the shill you are? fan. Uh, so Dan had posted that a, a day ago as I record this video. Uh, and I can tell it really kind of shook him up a little bit. I mean, who wants this uh, dragon breath of negativity right in your email box? You know, I know it's the internet, but still, <laughs> we're human for crying out loud. Uh, and there was more, uh, but I wanted to focus on that particular aspect uh, that I read. And he did give me permission to post about it. Thank you, Dan, if you're watching. Uh, so... The first quote got to it. Uh, the idea that we are shills for ourselves. And one could be a shill for your, in, for oneself, a self-promoter, in many different ways. Like we could do the positivity thing, and that's a, a, a stigma that we carry as content creators. But you can also be a shill for yourself by taking advantage of people's uh, negativity bias. I went over that in the last video, how... Um, negativity and criticism uh, in some way is reassuring for the consumers. And so uh, by writing the hit piece and taking people down, we're uh, building an audience and getting the thing that we want, which is clicks that way. Uh, so I wanted to break that aspect down uh, and not because it's like this rampant thing, right? And it's not like we're a wash negativity. If we were, we wouldn't even do this in the first place. Like we get hundreds of comments uh, each individual creator of any size that are so supportive and we appreciate every single one of them. It's those two or three or, you know, sometimes more that are just ugh, gross and disgusting. They stick with us. Uh, in psychotherapy, uh, we say uh, the good stuff is slippery like Teflon and the bad stuff is sticky like Velcro. You can get hundreds. You can get as many good compliments as you want. The the bad stuff, the bad beats, as they say in poker, the the negative shots to stay with us. And I wanted to reach out to content creators uh, to uh, help us talk through how to deal with that particular aspect. So I think the way forward is to directly lean into that question of motivation. Why do we do what we do? Uh, thinking about that quote, yeah, that's exactly where the skepticism will come from. What is our base motivation and everything else around that? What are our relationships and what are we getting? And all that stuff is important. But like, I think folks need to know 
what our motivation is. And it's useful for us to know ourselves <laughs> what our main motivation is. You know, I love games. Sounds great. Uh, but that in and of itself can cause some difficulties. And I'll get to those in a little bit. Uh, I think, though, a more um, a deeper and a more positive and forward looking motivation uh, for a content creator is to grow the hobby. I identified myself as an enthusiast uh, in the last episode. And so I'll explain what I mean by that. An enthusiast is someone who loves the hobby, who gets a lot from the hobby. It isn't just like a pastime for us. It's something that gives us all these things, you know, intellectual challenge and uh, imagination, social connection, all these things. And we are doing the basic human thing of sharing uh, something that we find good and happy. What is one of the most basic human things? Uh, whether you're talking about evolution, you're talking about, you know, small children observing them, they see a good thing, and that the first thing that happens is we look to somebody else to share it. And that is what we're trying to tap into when we make our content and do our things. So i uh, talk about myself. Uh, I started in 2016, so six years ago, as I recorded this as a solo games uh, person. I had this podcast every week, and I talked about solo games. And at the time, you know, solo games were doing okay, but it wasn't like, you know, every game had a solo mode. In fact, there were some companies that were resisting solo modes, and a lot of gamers were very skeptical about it. Oh, that's a little bit weird. Uh, and I, I was very fired up by the mission to grow this little aspect of solo game that gave me so much joy. And it has. I mean, <laughs> I like to think that I was a tiny part of the growth of solo gaming. There was definitely the pandemic and other, other stuff too. Uh, but that gives me joy. That gives me direct, that's the, the direct material benefit that I get, just that feeling uh, of joy, of spreading something good. And now it's changed. I mean, now I'm more, way more focused on the just diverse gamers, multiculturalism. Uh, so but that's my current mission. That's my current enthusiasm for the hobby, how I want it to grow. Others have the same goals, so like, you know, Mick and stuff, my family plays games, many other people. Uh, some people are innovating, you know, going on Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitch, finding new ways of sharing this hobby. That's the point. The point is to give access to new, uh, to people and new audiences. Is it to find a different way to get numbers? I mean, I think the numbers are a means to an end for a good creator. And my hope is that people can see the difference between an enthusiast, someone who's doing it out of a sense of enthusiasm and love versus someone who's doing it for the clicks. And I know that could be a hard distinction, but there is a distinction. That's the important thing. Um, uh, Dan, who had uh, posted that Twitter thing, he grows the hobby in his own way. He's growing the hobby intellectually. He's giving uh, intellectual depth to uh, games that he's uh, playing. And I, I know that there are people uh, that really resonate with his takes and it informs their game design. It informs their uh, appreciate for discussion. So like uh, Dan grows the hobby in his own way. So uh, yeah, that is the main goal. We want to grow the hobby and I invite every content creator to get in touch with that aspect of their mission. And the reason is, A, because it's cool. It's good to have a, a, a firm motivation beyond just like, I love games. And so the second reason uh, is, I think it gives us a good answer to the skeptic. Skeptics wondering, why do we do what we do? And we can respond. It's actually against my interest as a person who wants to see board gaming grow when a person has a bad time at the table. Uh, especially when they feel hoodwinked or scammed, like, you know, uh, so if I didn't care, right, and all I wanted was the attention of the clicks, then I would just, you know, gravitate towards the latest and greatest, the hotness, and say how great it is, and get all those numbers, and that, cultivate that publisher relationship and just move on to the next thing. That's what will happen if I didn't care. But I do care. I want that person, you, the consumer and the gamer, to have a good time at the table. So... It is in my interest to make sure when a game crosses my table that it's good or that it's offering something for somebody. So not every game that uh, passes to my table I love, but I might see something in it that another person might enjoy. So I, I think the best reviewers will look at a game and not just say, okay, good or bad. They'll say, if you're this type of person, uh, then you'll like this thing. 
uh, they'll try to get specific and try to match game with gamer. That is uh, the healthiest practice to do what is our ultimate goal, which is to grow the hobby. The, the best outcome is when somebody finds their match. You know, either a game lives up to the hype and they love it, or the, the, the creator has taken the time to say, this type of gamer would like this type of thing. They find their match and they enjoy it and they you know, continue to pursue the hobby. They share that out with their friends. We get that good virtuous spider web. That is uh, what we want. And I'm, I want to say to people right now, I'm invested in that. I'm way more invested in that process than I am in the clicks and the attention. All that other stuff is just a means to an end. So I guess that does bring up other uh, conversations about, you know, a motivation, you know, altruism and, you know, operating without getting explicit material benefits. Is that really a uh, thing that happens? I just, for me, like... I get so much joy, like I feel it, uh, when someone enjoys a game. So I'm very invested uh, in making sure that people are matched with their ideal experiences. And from what I know of a lot of creators, uh, the vast majority of creators that I've met here in the hub, and I've been blessed to meet many of them, uh, they feel the same way. Even if they're not directly plugged into the mission of growing the hobby, I know their joy. Uh, is when someone emails them or comments and says, wow, I found something great uh, thanks to you. So uh, I think it would benefit us as creators to just, you know, not just kind of like, oh, wow, that's great, and then move on, but to really kind of settle in that and own that as the core reason why we do what we do. So that sounds wonderful. <laughs> um, obviously... Uh, in the real world, it's a lot more uh, fraught and complicated. Uh, and this is how. So what I'm describing, and I'm uh, throwing this out to Dan right now and any other theology dorks. Uh, this is like a pre-lapsarian uh, vision. This is like before the fall, before corruption. You know, this basic instinct to share and want to see good things grow. Uh, that's before some of the other stuff gets in there. Uh, unfortunately, because of the way our hobby, board game, is structured, two different streams have kind of gotten intermingled with that basic instinct to share. Um, number one, publishers. So it's a low margin hobby. And in other hobbies, they might be able to afford like separate ad people or like, you know, marketing directors who do their own uh, crafting of advertisements and, you know, uh, go, they go on the YouTubes and they go on the social medias. And some do, but most rely on us for their advertising. So we've built these connections. We've built the trust in the community. We're sharing things. The, the, the publisher comes in and says, hey, we want to leverage that for attention for our games. And we're looking at it going, okay, the publishers are, you know, they have something good to share. Uh, and they're giving out free review copies. <laughs> Continue to uh, emphasize that, yes, review copies are pretty awesome uh, and emphasize that uh, we need to be transparent about that. That's an FTT guideline, by the way. Uh, just Whenever you get anything of material benefit from the publisher, let people know. Uh, so, but it's still fraud. And it takes that sharing thing and it adds like an extra... Uh, you know, uh, a reason for the, the consumer to be skeptical. And that's something we have to own. Uh, and that also brings it to that next thing that has come in. Uh, we don't have a separate kind of consumer reports type uh, bureau or agency or entity. We don't have a news source. We don't have journalism. And I spoke last time about like, you know, people, people want journalism. You don't have it. Again, it's money, you know, there are people who, you know, th there's no money in it. F too few people are willing to contribute to something like that, at least for now. Uh, maybe down the road that might change, uh, but there's not a lot of funding for independent, adversarial, journalistic uh, reviews of games. So the consumer is asking us for that too. So we are want to share. The publisher wants advertising. The consumer wants journalism. All those three desires are in, are at play, I should say, uh, in the life of the content creator. And 
I would invite all creators to kind of just think of that uh, and, and try to be a little bit more, you know, critical and self-reflective and honest and verbal about the real d the difficulties and pitfalls that are created when three different streams of want <laughs> interact in one uh, person. So that's number one. The second one, again, I'm going to credit uh, um, online conversations. Uh, man, I've learned so much from people. It's, it's so exciting. So um, they made a great point. They said that the biggest trap that a content creator falls into is in our enthusiasm, we express more enthusiasm for the game than for the gamer. This game is great, an instant classic, uh, you know, uh, defeats every other game in its genre. Uh, this replaces all these other games in my collection. Uh, you should buy this game. It uh, belongs in every single collection. Uh, yada, yada, yada. And, it, you know, we're, we're again, it's a hobby full of enthusiastic people, and we're getting very enthusiastic about what we're covering. So we want to express enthusiasm so we uh, can be very... Uh, imprecise, I'll say, uh, with the way we talk about this stuff. And unfortunately, because of the environment, because of those three wants kind of operating in our field, unfortunately, when we're too enthusiastic about a game, then that triggers that skepticism on the part of certain consumers. And they get the sense that we're more enthusiastic about either the game or our own online presence, our own present presentation, than about them. And they're fun. And if we're true enthusiasts for the hobby, then we should care about that. And I, I think uh, the, the best way to think about our role is that we're matchmakers. We want to match people's, uh, 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 you know, the game to people's fun. We want to make sure that people uh, who like or who would like a particular style of game are connected with it. And people who don't like the game don't connect and they find something else. That's our, our role. That, and that can manifest in a positive, forward-looking way. We don't have to get into journalism. We don't have to get into you know, uh, you know, criticism, negativity, all that kind of stuff. We can accomplish that goal by being enthusiastic and manifesting enthusiasm for the gamer and their fun. And I think uh, a lot of stuff would kind of get worked out naturally that way. Uh, so uh, those are my thoughts. Uh, I know this won't stop negative comments from coming in. It's the internet. Um, and I know, I see the, the, the view count of this video is not going to be like a hugely proliferated or anything. At the very least, whoever does watch it, especially if you're a creator, uh, to affirm your value, uh, you do good uh, by taking this beautiful thing, which is board games, and spreading it and growing it. That That is the best thing that you can do. And I'm thankful for each and every person uh, who engages in that work. And I just want to see us sustained. Uh, I want to see us, well, with tools and resources to resist negativity and keep going. And, you know, I know that sounds very specific to content creators. You, the consumer, the gamer, benefit when we do our thing. If you can change your mind, you can change the world, people. So until next time, everybody.